Good morning, everyone. You are watching Coffee with Contractors. I'm your host, Splash, and as I told you, I had a special guest. How are you doing today, Phil? I'm good, Robbie. Thanks, buddy. No, I'm not in Iowa. <laughs> I'm still in Utah. You are here visiting. Yes. We came out for my mom's 70th birthday. Oh, nice. Well, tell her happy birthday. So, happy Mom's. birthday, Mom. For those that don't know who you are, because you are a silent leader in this paint business, tell everyone. Um, my name is Phil Klein. I own Tama Painting and Specialty Coatings out of Davenport, Iowa. And we've been in business, gosh, it's coming up on 19 years. So listen, um, listen very carefully. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> Because we're going to talk, we've talked about what we're going to talk about here. Yep. Um, so, first and foremost, I like to ask us: How did you get into contracting? No, no. Was it always painting, or was there other things that evolved into you? It being was. A it was other things. So, during school, when I was going to college, I actually came to college out here in Utah at UVU. Okay. Um, we've done. The guy that I worked for right before I started the business was kind of a jack of all trades handyman we did concrete siding framing but painting was always the easiest mm -hmm. and he was just so he was this old polynesian guy you know with the accent he's like hey bro you know <laughs> when i was cutting the line he goes there's a surgeon he goes you know he makes six figures a year because you could do that with painting just cutting in i'm like all right screw it, man, let's try it nice <laughs> so nice so you did you start your business here and you started working in utah as a painter started working in utah as a painter because you've traveled a little bit, yes. as we discussed. Yes, I've, I've been all over, so I'll just I'll make it real quick. <laughs> Mom is from Western Samoa. Dad is from Chicago. We lived in Chicago. With the work he did, we moved Iowa, Texas, Minnesota, lived in California, Utah, and Vegas. Nice. Over the years. So you've been around. But your home is in Iowa now. Home is in Iowa. That's where you're at. Yes. Um, you have a crew. We're gonna talk about it. Yep. So, I do stalk people on Instagram a lot, I told you that, and Facebook. Yep. But let me know what you're doing. I saw okay. a post a few months ago, I think it was this year, you just got a new shop. Yes. First, how many in your crew? Why a shop? Okay. Um, first, we have, we have seven out in the field. Okay. And we have a girl in the office that does payroll, job costing, all that, and then we just Does she do your bids? No. No, okay. No. And then we hired a project manager about five weeks ago. Nice, congrats. Thank you. We'll talk about project manager. So we'll, we'll get to that. Yes. But the shop was a big thing. Yes. Because you would talk to some other painters that have had them, yep. discuss the logistics of it, because yep. you're looking at size, what you've done in the past, yep. what you know you can do. You, when we first met, we talked a little bit before we started, but yep. you talked about your target market. Mm. And then it's, as a contractor, if you don't know your target market, you won't succeed. Yep. You've got to have, and it takes a little bit of time. So what yeah, is your target market good. that you are going after? And you know it's yep. going to be sustainable, right? No matter what happens, it should be a sustainable. Sustainable-ish. Sustainable-ish. <laughs> so our, our, our main business is new construction. Okay. More of, more of the higher end, about 800000 and up, as far as price range goes. Um, so what we, what we do with that is those are our anchor jobs mm -hmm. because we know we're going to be in them for at least two months, sometimes three. Okay. So beginning of the year, we schedule that out and then we just fill in all the little blank spots with residential repaints, commercial work. And then now with the shop, we've added another dimension to business as well. So what was the shop for? What was the main reason? Where, where did you see that you needed the shop? Um, over the years, we've we've passed up a lot of business, where we get either the contractors or the suppliers that supply the doors, the trim, pillow windows. We do some work with, where they call and ask us to finish stuff before they install it, or they okay. need a replacement. And we've always had to bring it to our new construction sites and finish it in the basement or in the garage. So it was just it was just a market that we were always missing out on, mm -hmm. and we were already paying. We had two store units already. So, with the with the shop, we only pay four hundred bucks more a month oh, nice. than our two storage units. It's so, probably paid for itself. 
Already, probably yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. Nice. And it will. Do you have, so when you're talking about your shop, so you don't do cabinets, I thought you, because I know I've seen some pictures of cabinets, that's not what you have. We're getting into them. You're talking into the doors, yep. you know, your first shipment you said was how many linear feet of trim. Yep. How much was it? Just over 5,000 linear feet. That's a lot. So you're taking these trim and you're placing them out, you're getting them painted. Are you cutting them to size there? Nope. No. So you're just getting them painted. Yep. Take them back to the location where they need to be at. Do you do the touch-ups afterwards? With, with how we've structured the shop and how I want to run projects out of there, they need to deliver and they need to pick up. Okay, so you don't so do any just, of that? Nope. We, nice. we just finish it in the shop and then it's their painters that are on site that are doing the walls that will touch up all the trim. Oh, okay. So we'll send stain and all that, but everything, everything they drop off, we finish, we give them a certain timeline of how long I think mm -hmm. this many linear feet they can come pick up. Oh, they nice. come pick it up, we wrap it, they take it. I like that. Which works out. Heated, because Iowa gets cold. Yes, very cold. Ventilation system? Yes. Right now with that. Because we... there's a trick to this. Yeah. Slavic has a certain trick. Yep. Nick May has a certain trick. There's all these weird yep. little, what's your setup going to be like? Ours right now is we spray all water-based products. Okay. We're not... I, you don't dabble in the oils yet. I, I've gone away from them. I don't okay. like them as much. So what we do, the ventilation system that we have is we got the GFS wave okay. filters. So we have two on the intake and then we set it up to where we have two on the discharge as well. Yeah. So it filters four times before it cycles it back into the shop. Nice. So, but we do have it set up to where if we want to spray solvent based, we can actually pop the cap off the top, put it on the side, the landlord already said we can vent it out the roof. Oh, sweet. So we do have the option, the modification for it, if we decide to go that route. So if you're a business owner watching this and you are thinking about getting a shop, what are the things that you looked at? Like what were the the main things that you're important that you needed to be able to have? Because um, you probably looked at a lot. Yes. But seeing what was going to work and what's not going to yep. work. Yep. What were those important things that you looked at? My, my first thing was, was location. Okay. The one we have right now is about five minutes from my house. Perfect. And it's, and it's kind of centrally located to the suppliers that we deal with right now, that it's easy, the accessibility is easy. Um, we're actually having a garage door cut in the side of it, so it'd be easier for them to drop stuff off to us. Um, the size of the shop, obviously, kind of the layout. Um, mm -hmm. which this one was nice because it was just a blank 2,500 square foot space. Like a pole barn? Mm, no, it's off. It used to be, it used to be like a racquetball club and then I think they had it as a church. Oh, okay. So it's just like a big, I think our size is 25 feet across and whatever the length is, I'm not sure about that. Okay, please. But we, we were able to frame everything up inside that we want. I loved it. So it I love like a blank space. You had your kids help you. Yes. Did you not? Yeah. I love that about yep. you. It's important. We're so busy. Yep. And I know some of our spouses, not mine and not yours, but with other people, like you're taking yep. so much time. Incorporate yep. your family into it. Because yep. your kids may want to yep. do this. Someday. Someday. Well, the kicker is I had to pay them. <laughs> they didn't they did just volunteer and come do it for free. But that's okay. <laughs> I pay my kids. I do. I pay my kids um, I'm cheap. 20 cents an outlet to take on and take off and wash. Yeah. When we do interiors, on extra they do yeah. stuff. But it teaches them what a paycheck is. My kids are, yeah. you know, 13 and younger, but yeah. they know because now my kids come to me like, hey, Dad, do you have any work? I need to, you know. There's something I want, I need, video games. Yes, is, yeah. you, your kids and mine yeah. will be friends. <laughs> yeah, so the, the whole Dave Ramsey thing with, whenever, with our, with our younger boys, whatever they get, and if they want to spend something, they need to, we have a little bag that they need to save and give. Nice. Nice. So when we go to church, they give their, they, give they their pay portion. their tithing. Perfect. Yep. I love that. So. You and I could talk Dave Ramsey. I love Dave Ramsey. <laughs> um, so the shop is important. It's already helped. You see where the success. How did your crew adjust to the shop? Imagine they're all on board for it and with them because it's less travel. Yep. I would imagine so. Um, have they found, because with some shops that I've been into, there, there's really good camaraderie and there's not because some people don't know their flow, but you're, yep. it seems like your crew knows where their strengths are. Yep. We, 
as of right now, we've only had the guys at the shop a couple times. Okay. Because we're we're so busy out in the field that there's the separate there's the out on site crew. Okay. And then I'm looking to build a just a shop crew. Oh, nice. Because right now it's it's me, and we have two other guys in the shop right now. So, so. building a shop is going to increase your value, which allows you to hire more people to do the quality of work. So if your target market is where you say it's at, your quality of work is important. Very. Um, what's your training regiment for your guys, your crew? Oh, Do you, are you on site with them? Because I know now you just hired a, a business manager. We'll talk about that. Yep. But when you bring someone else on, like, yep. what is that process? Because it's hard. I failed at that, I'll be honest. Like, mm -hmm. that is not a strong suit of mine training someone. Because if it's not done the way that yep. Splash wants it, then I just get mad and I'll just do it. You're a lot more patient than I am probably. I'm I'm probably a little too patient. <laughs> but we have we do have our our whole SOP okay. for our new construction, for our repaints, and we go over it, but it's a lot of steps. Okay. Like when we actually Do you graduate down, them? Do you have like these gra little yes. steps? Yes. Okay. So we have a tier system for our pay that incorporates the board of operations that we have on site. So our, like our new construction SOP is about 120, 125 steps. Uh -huh. Because if you had no idea of what you're doing, if you just followed the list step by step, it can walk you through every single thing that we do. Oh, nice. And then with our tier system, it's seven tiers for our pay. You know, our tier one is, is like our filling nail holes, sanding, moving stuff around, cleaning up. And so I call on that the so golfer. On, basically, <laughs> we call him the T one, which goes along with the Tama. Okay, so. and we're going to talk about that because I love that you didn't go with Phil, but we'll talk about yes. the main thing in a minute. Yeah. So you have a system. That's yes. a huge thing right now in the industry of contractors. Yep. Anyone that's successful will tell you have a system in play. Listen, yep. I don't have a. I had a system, but. I, I just know where my strength is. It's not managing people. Subcontracting, great, but not managing, yeah. no. Yeah. So I'll add one more thing to that is okay. if you have the systems and you have the processes and they understand it, the big thing is is being just being consistent with it and follow through with it. Okay. Where, where I failed with it within the last year is we got so busy because getting the work, like you said, is is easy part. Yeah. It's it's executing it and having everybody executing it to your standards is a tough part. Yeah. That's where I kind of failed, where I dropped the ball a little bit. But with our new project manager, hi Katie Brown. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that because that yes. changed. That was my next question. Your day to day yes. life. Yes. So tell us beforehand, yep. so that we understand the importance of okay. Katie. Okay. So what my day to day looked like prior to Katie was getting the guys out on site, getting them set up. Because um, we usually run anywhere between four to six jobs at a time to have that overlap, to have that cash flow. Because okay. we'll, be on, we'll be on projects two to three months sometimes. Um, it was getting people set up, putting out fires, doing a little bit of coaching, getting out to do estimates. And then once, once the guys gets near the end of the day, two, three o'clock, then I'll go to go to that site and spray stuff out. Oh, okay. I spray so you're still, you are still spray, you yes. were, or are? I still am. Okay, nice. Um, so then I'll go out and get that stuff ready, get it sprayed. So when they come back the next day, they have something to sand out and get ready, recall, touch up, stuff like that. Nice. And then still go home and do, do the invoices, office Invoices, all that Do the invoices, stuff. estimates. Um, because at any given time there, I'll have anywhere between four to six estimates to do at home. And if they're new <laughs> construction, that'll take me at least two to three hours to go through my estimating program. And then we use Estimate Rocket. Okay. And then put it all into Estimate Rocket and That's email good. it out. Are you reading blueprints? Yes. How did you learn to read blueprints? Self-taught? Self-taught. Self-taught. Okay. But now, because I used to do it all by hand with the ruler measure it and I had my my cup of highlighters and I'd highlight everything because I'd mark per door per window per built-in mudroom lockers and then linear feet of everything we about a year and a half ago we use plan swift now 
Okay. It's it's a program where we they email me the plans. I load it in the program. I already have all my preset linear foot, square foot per item costs. Okay. And then I just do it on the computer. Nice. It's like a CAD program. All right. I know there's some apps that have that out there. Yep. Um, let's talk about Katie now. What brought yep. you to the point of knowing you needed her? What was the? Well, was there something that happened, or was it just? you knew you wanted to step away and take less pressure off you. Um, and then tell us where you got her because I love, a lot of people are doing this. Yeah. We're not gonna apologize to the paint stores. No. We're not. Um, honestly, it all started where I was dropping the ball with certain things. Okay. The guys would get frustrated, they'll tell you. Because yeah. I was supposed to get this done for them or pick this up and have it to the job site and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I'd just say, hey, just go run and get it. So there was a lot of the logistics wasn't there okay because I just I just didn't have the time I appreciate your honesty most contractors would yeah. not admit their failures it's yeah. not really a failure it's it's a learning process yeah. because you're growing and yeah. sometimes you grow substantially big enough yeah. so you got her from where Sherwin Williams okay that's because it's from my house because she knew your business yes for how many years I dealt with Katie probably nine years. So you have a built-in relationship, yep. business relationship that yep. this person knows what you do, yep. knows what the expectation is. Yep. She's probably heard the headaches from you and your crew. <laughs> yes. What is she doing for you now? She is a project manager for us. So she, right now, we're we're still in that learning phase because she's only been with about, about five weeks. Mm -hmm. um, running, starting to run the jobs. Um, so th the nice thing that I love about it is the very first week, she brought this up to me. She's like, I wanna interview the guys, I wanna to get to know them, understand where they think the company's at. So kind of give their mm -hmm. their state of the union of where they think we're at, where they think they fit into the company, what their role looks like, and then even some feedback on me. Okay. Good or bad. I wanna pause right there. My wife is in a corporate situation. She's been told many times that is her number one strong suit. When she hires someone new, yep. she tells them to interview the rest of the team. Yep. Get, a, get a ground base of what everything is. Because now this person, Katie, is going to know everyone's personality. Yep. She knows who she can mess with, who she can maybe joke around with, who is literal Larry that you can't say anything to unless it's directly what needs to be done. Yep. And she knows now what your crew thinks of you and where your business is going. Yep. So give her a high five for me because that oh, yeah. is being a football coach. I tell my team the same thing in, in any whatever your business is. If you bring yep. someone onto that, yep. it's important because it's the only way you, having a pizza party and say, hey, here's Katie. Doesn't really all doesn't work. Yep. So I love that. That is one of the best practices. If you don't take anything yep. from this. <laughs> That's what I want you to take because it will change and you're gonna yep. see this in six months because now yep. There's gonna be things that you Not saying that your crew doesn't but you like everyone in your crew, but there may be things that you saw in people on your crew That you didn't know or questioning yep. that you're gonna know and you're gonna know how to take care of that person in yep. their needs yep. And if they're take if you're taking care of a, a person in their needs yep. they're gonna care a little bit more about you. Not that they're gonna care yeah. about your business, but yeah. they're gonna care more. Because yep. that's their Absolutely. paycheck. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited for you. We'll have to it's do an exciting. up we'll have to do an update on this because it's exactly. it's a it's a very lost business. Yep. She must have a really good background. Or have dealt with this before. Assistant manager and yes. yeah. Okay. So that leads us into one of the other questions that I have. You have a life coach. Yes. Or a, not a life coach, but a would you call it well, a life coach? I'd say life coach, business, business coach. coach. Not a mentor, because yeah. that is. I said mentor today. I teased yeah. what we were doing. Mentor is a little bit different. But do you want to disclose who this person is, or just that you have a coach? Um, some of them from the business brush group already know who she is. Okay. And what she does. Okay, so this person has a background, but she is my wife. Your wife. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> wife, if you're watching this, yes, I have the same kind of wife. So yeah. it, it's it's perfect. Yeah. But where does the importance come on that? Okay. So her, I'll go with her background first. Her background was Dale Carnegie for 15 years. Um, 
for anybody that doesn't know how to win friends and influence people. Um, Great books out there by them. Yes. Great yes. books. So we've actually sent, over the years, we've sent probably eight of our guys through the Dale Carnegie program. Because what we're because what we're looking to do with, with our business, not only teach them how to paint and give them a paycheck, but make, make them better dads is what we originally started with because of all the stuff that I've been through in my life and with my business is that was the main focus. But we do have now, our crew's probably half women now. Nice. Yeah. So sending them through the Dale Carnegie program is our, our belief is, is that if we make them how to handle their stress and worry, if we can help make their home life better, mm -hmm. it's going to translate into better work yeah. for us because they're gonna be able to handle all the issues that they have, or at least even understand how to handle them. Because nice. that's the problem with most, with most contractors, especially in the painting industry, is that I'm just a painter. We're the lowest, we most of the time get <laughs> screwed and get jacked around on the jobs. Yes. You know, and then we have to fix everybody else's stuff. So actually, we're probably the best trade So you mean that meme that says the painter will take care of it? Yeah. That's... It's true. <laughs> it's true. You know, so yes. just trying to change their mindset, because that's a big thing is changing their mindset not to where they're just they're just a painter. Mm -hmm. But is the coach coaching you alone or is she no. including talking to the employees? Before she switched companies, we would do trainings quarterly. Okay. Whether it was how to accept feedback, because everybody can give feedback. Mm -hmm. But not everybody understands how to accept it. So she's done training on that. We've done trainings on the disc profile. Um, Dang it, what was the other one? I'm totally drawing a blank now. So, but she's there to help you out. Basically, yeah. And and look, is and yep. I know it's probably different because it's your spouse, but a lot of those contractors yep. have to understand that constructive criticism, you have to learn yep. to accept that. Yeah, absolutely. Because for me, as the contractor, there's things I've overlooked that my wife will come on and be like, uh, what about this? And I'm sure yours is too. And you may get a little frustrated with it, like, stop telling me. But at the end of the day, yep. if you didn't know that, you won't know that for the next job. Yeah. And then to carry that over to your yep. to your crew. Yeah. Well, which I'll give, is you awesome. a, give you one thing, because anytime, anytime you have the husband and wife mm -hmm. as part of the business, you can kind of get that, well, we need that separation. Mm -hmm. I don't want you coaching me all the time. The good thing that my wife does is if I come home and I start venting or talking about my day, mm -hmm. she'll ask, do you want the loving wife response <laughs> or do you want the business consultant response? So she asks permission to give me feedback. Nice. Because we had a chat on, I think it was on the business brush group, there was a lady that had, her husband retired, was in Fortune 500 companies, and he wanted to tell her how to run the business, but it's her business, mm -hmm. you know? So we chatted a little bit and just, just that asking permission. Yeah. Set those set those boundaries, set those expectations. You need to. Yeah. And I think for me, I would even take that a little I would take that a little farther. We, with your crew. That was one of my weaknesses is I would never listen to my crew when they would say things. But I had to start realizing because again, my coach, my wife, said to me, I guess I have a coach, um, said to me, you need to listen to them. Because I'm not there every second of the day. Okay. So I may actually not know what happens. And hopefully Katie's gonna change that. So moving Absolutely. forward, how did your crew accept Katie then? When you brought her on, how was was it accepted or was there a little bit of like, whoa, what's going on, Phil? Like, I don't like this. I think it was, I think they accepted her 100%. Okay. Because all of them knew her from the paint store. Okay, perfect. You know, they've all known her. And what, how she changes our dynamic now is that she's an advocate for them mm -hmm. towards me but then also an advocate for the business, but there's that buffer between us to where they feel they can speak freely and give any kind of feedback that they want nice. of either positive or negative, and it gets to Katie, and then she'll filter it and give me what I need to know. Because, sorry. Right. No, you're good. I, so I was thinking one thing that they've, that they've done, which is, was, a little, was a little hard at first, mm -hmm. was everybody always wanted to call me. So my initial response was, instead of stepping in like I normally would, mm -hmm. did you call Katie? No. Nice. Okay, call Katie, talk to her, because most of the time, 
she's gonna be able to handle it. And if she's not, if it's if it is that next level, yeah, then she'll bring it to me. But she's nice. she's extremely capable and can handle just about anything else that's gonna happen. She may call or text to confirm, but that'd be about it. Nice. I love Which it. It's awesome. And I think that kudos to you for being able to accept that because it's not hard like as business owners, when you create something, it's yours. Yeah. That passion is just, you know that passion, yeah. you know. Um, but to be able to say, listen, I'm, I have to bring someone in. I know I'm going to hear things I don't want to hear. But being able to accept it, because yeah. we have such strong personalities. Like our personalities, like I don't know what type, there's colors or whatever. But I don't know where I, I am on a chart. But like, it's important that you say, okay, I'm going to listen. I may want to go choke somebody, but I understand that it comes from yeah. a caring place. Yeah. And awesome, and I think Sherman Williams, Benjamin Moore, PPG, whatever paint stores, and we're not just talking painters here, this is for all contractors. Yep. But if you go to a store and you know someone that's been working with your business that knows, those are the kind of people that you want to reach out to. Yeah. Not because the friendship's there. Yep. You know, because I do have one lady at Sherman Williams that if she ever was like, hey, I want to do this. I know she could be my Katie yeah. because she's not afraid to tell me, Hey, you need to do this. Yeah. But she's also not afraid to say, Hey guys, I've listened to her talk to other people. So I imagine yeah. that similarity. Yeah. So that's great on the Sherwin Williams part for teaching. Yeah. That's just part of that, that platform. Yeah. So it's, absolutely. we're not, we're not competition, even yeah. in that aspect, you yeah. know, and I love that. That's I, I <laughs> throw up community <laughs> over competition because yeah. if you're doing good, you can't, you'll never buy every paint can out of Sherman Williams in one day. You're just yeah. not going to. Yeah. So there's other businesses that need that. And, and if you're making business and making the business stand out, yeah. the customers are going to pay more, which means yeah. more money for you. Let's be real, like we're in this because we yeah. want to make money. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. on a transition part, I've wanted to ask this to other painters and I haven't had a chance to, or other contractors for that matter. But specifically for painters right now, maybe for anyone that's outside so for me we're at, we're an exterior company interior tends to slow down yep. what have you done so we're in October now yep. so as you're transitioning I know you're doing new commercial or you do a lot more commercial but what do you tra how do you transition your business to know that you always have that workflow for your crew like have you had a time where you haven't had as much but now what have you done to make sure that that consistency is there for them obviously yep. having a name for yourself is one, but you have to build it first. Yep. So what have you? What did you do? Um, Nick may have killed me for this one. Um, Good. <laughs> I, I am. I am that. He's guy. too busy to respond and kill yeah. you. <laughs> I, I am that guy that says that I don't have a website. I don't really do a ton of marketing. I'm more of the face to face. Mm -hmm. I want to build that relationship. Networking is what I do. So when when I first started back in Iowa after after 2009. I probably had I had two meetings a day for probably about six months, just getting out face to face, building that relationship, introducing myself, speaking at real estate agent at their sales meetings and stuff like that, going to networking events, and just build that relationship. Because in my mind is that people are going to buy from us long term. Yeah. If we have that relationship versus if it's just a transaction. So you're similar to me. You have the 1950s mentality hitting the yep. pavement. Yep. Our grandfathers, our grandmothers, yep. whoever was working back then, they got their briefcase, they got their suit and tie on, yep. they went out and introduced themselves to who they were. Yep. That was my number one rule when I started. I do have a website now. It actually doesn't generate as much business for me as I thought, <laughs> but I'm tweaking that. But the website isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first to say that. Yeah. Your, what you've built is, especially with realtors, that's how I, my business boomed the minute I met a realtor. Nice. And I have seven of them in my back pocket. They will tell you they have five painters in their back pocket. I'm okay with that. Because yep. I can't paint every house at one time. Yep. So Absolutely. that face-to-face -face is important. But you can't teach that. Yep. But with Katie coming in, is she going to start doing the bids? Or is, with having her now, because you said you, you dropped the ball on some things. Now with having that coat, this, what, are you, what is her title? She's the... Project manager. Project manager. Yep. What is it going to open for you as the business owner now? So much more. Because um, starting, because getting the shop now, it's a whole other division of the business mm -hmm. that we have to market differently. 
Okay. Um, so I'm focused on that. She's focused on all of our current stuff that we have. New so picking up paint isn't your thing now as much? Nope. nope. She's going to do that. I do want to transition in her her into doing, to doing estimates, but I want to get her comfortable with what she's doing on site. I've been transferring all the communications from our builders, um, new construction and commercial, to her, mm -hmm. and she's doing well with that. Um, so, so changing lanes slowly. Yep. Slowly. I always tell people, once you find your lane, stay in it, but you have to change lanes. Yep. But if you're doing it too fast, you're going to overlook things. So great. Yes. And we're going to miss stuff, and we're going to drop the ball. Yes. It's going to happen, but as yep. you, the, the smarts that you have knowing that, yep. you're already ready for it. Yes. Because you know that, but again, some people would say, well, you're telling the universe you're going to fail. No, you're telling the universe, I'm ready for what you're going to give me because I'm already going to know how to react to that, which is great business smarts. One thing with Katie, is she wearing your clothes? I, this is picky because in this industry, yeah. you're not wearing what? Ah! No, we're good. Sorry. No, my bad. We're going to get it. Can we just have you come sit over here and hold this for us? No. We're back. Oh, shit, dude. It's okay. We'll edit that because I can do me. it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We're going to do a tip. Okay. So, as far as with Katie, what is she doing? We dropped it. I'm using um, I I dropped, a gimbal. And I he hit it. He had his long legs. <laughs> How tall are you? About 6'1. Six 6'1. One. Six one. I met him when I saw him for the first time because I've seen videos. I thought it was a football player. Like you're built, like About you could still play. 250. And you tell me you have a kid in your 20s, like yeah. you look like you could go do anything right now. So health is important. Yes. But let's get back to Katie, because <laughs> I can edit all that. So as far as Katie, painters, contractors have uniforms. Yes. Is she wearing it? Because I do see people that are in this business that don't follow that trend of having uniforms. Yep. Yes, she does. She, she does. wears just our regular t-shirts, and mm -hmm. then we just got her some polos. Okay. So, Speaking of shirts, yes. tell us your name. What is your company? Because we know who you are, but what's the yep. company name? I love where it came from, how it originated, and that you didn't use your name. Yes. The company name is Tama Painting and Specialty Coatings. Uh, so my background, my mom is from Western Samoa, so Tama means father in Samoan. And where it originated was when I first got into the business, I think my daughter was in, in preschool. The guy we were painting his exterior of his house, he's like, you know, don't be, don't be full climb painting because I was looking to go out on my own. He goes, you need to come up with something that's gonna stand out to everybody. Okay. And just kind of talking about my daughter at preschool and you know, all of us that have had kids in preschool know that they come home with that list of where do you live, your address, so they can name all that off. What's your dad do? My daddy paints. That was my original business. And why I wanted to start the business was the guy I worked for wasn't paying me. We didn't have any consistency. And it was hard to support a family of two little kids and being married. So the whole transition now to Tama is still the representation of who I am, mm -hmm. why I do it, who I do it for is for the kids yeah I love that so. if you're gonna start a business don't name it after yourself yeah and it's it, not an ego thing no. it's it's setting yourself apart because you can go on Google Yelp Angie's list whatever yeah there's gonna be a million Phil painters Phil plumbers yep. Rob yep. I mean I'm Rob Smith how much more generic could you get from that <laughs> you know there's gonna be yeah. a million of us out there so yep. I yep. love that you've done that so to wrap this up I know you got to go yep. you're flying out today Yes. I know you're big in the family guy. I think contractors, we overwork ourselves a little bit too much sometimes. Yeah. What do you do when you're not painting? When you're not doing your business stuff yeah. and with or without family, what does your downtime look like for you? Because that's one of the most healthiest part of a business owner, yeah. but a lot of people fail at that and they get burnt out. Yeah. So yeah. what if you're Absolutely. in your 19 years of doing this, what are you doing? Our biggest thing is we have, so we have six kids. So there's a lot of activities that we go to, but our, the thing that we just like the most is we live in a court, Okay. you know, so we, we just hang out. There's, there's 13 kids from the bottom of the street all the way up. Oh, nice. So we just, all the neighbors come out when it's nice out. 
hang out on the court, we sit and chat, kids play, just hanging out, just spending time with, with the neighbors, with the family, just basically reconnecting, because especially with, with what my wife does now, we're busy as hell. Yeah. You know. Busy so this, is an understatement. I, you're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You're the way you Baseball, post. football, you know. Nice. But it's, it's also setting up the business and putting people into place that we can be out here in Utah. Mm -hmm. We've been out here since last Wednesday. Oh, nice. You know, and then, and then next month I go to Western Samoa for 11 days. Beautiful. And then we go on vacation for her parents' 50th. See, being a business if, owner, you can travel and have some fun. Yeah. Now, if you put these people into place that can, that can handle everything while you're gone. You've mentioned a name in here. I've mentioned it, Nick May. There's yep. other painters. Yep. We don't need to get into other names, but I yep. think it's valuable to your business. I've, I watched you from a year ago when you went to, to so Nick May, if you don't know him, he owns a company that does, uh, called Crank. Yep. I've not attended it yet. I'm going to be attending it, but I've seen you grow as a business owner from the post you did two years ago. If you're bored one day, yeah. go look at your post two years ago to where you are now. Yeah. I'm sure you already know mentally. Yeah. But how important are those? There's a lot of painters and contractors out there that have those products. Yeah. Um, you know, the Chris Berries, the Nick Mays. I don't think Slavic does it, but I know there's other ones that are doing them now. Yeah. Uh, Tanner does it in Florida that offer these programs. Yeah. Those are valuable. I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. That's time away from the job site. Yep. It takes money to make money. Yep. But real quick, to give them a little plug, and they're not doing anything for me to do this, but I think it's... A, I know yep. you've attended it. You've attended too, Twice. and your wife has attended it too. Yes. Yep. How important is that to your business? I'd say extremely important. Because um, no matter how long you've been in business, everybody thinks they have their, their systems down and their processes and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, I thought I did, but until we went to Crank and saw how not only Nick May did it, but every other contractor that was there, chatting with them about what they do, how they do stuff, mm -hmm. I was able to tweak stuff, yeah. and then there were there were two contractors that I talked to even before we got the shop. I picked their brain about what do you look for, what do I need to do, what do I need to generate, how should I set it up, and what would that look like to be profitable. Nice. And based on that information I got from those two guys, we got a shop six weeks ago. So you'd recommend going to these, because I think Nick yeah, May is announcing absolutely. another one. I know this week Chris is doing this, and they're all different, which I love. That yeah. they're not, we're not caught. A lot of people say, "Well, they're just copying." They're not. No, they are completely not. different with their yep. their their programs, what they're yep. teaching you. Yep. So to Nick and Chris and everyone else that's yep. doing this in the contract yep. world, thank you. Thank you. Big it's time. it's beautiful. And those you because I know a few people that have gone. Some of them are big time people like yourself. And when I say big time, I mean like people know who you are socially. You're in magazines. You've you've had these interviews. Then you also have met probably smaller contractors. You know, like I don't have a crew, it's just me, that they're still finding value yeah. in that. Because as a business owner, I've said this a million times, I'll always say it, you need to be open to what other people say because even Absolutely. though it's your business and your baby, you will miss something. Yep. And it's that thing that you miss that will make you not be as successful as you want to be. Yeah. So. Thank you so Absolutely. much. I know you're busy. I appreciate it. I look forward to doing follow up with you. Um, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Um, we are just on Facebook and Instagram at Tama Painting and Specialty Coatings, or just look me up, Philip Muli Klein. If Facebook. you can say that, <laughs> I will send you a hat. But you have to DM me, and he yeah. has to approve it. If you can say his name <laughs> one take, I'll send you a hat. So, thank you appreciate so much. It, I appreciate it, man. Nice to meet you, man. Nice chatting with you.